Our next guest is usually doing homework about now, but like college students across the country, he's on his winter break. He also has a day job, like a lot of college students, but what makes his story a little different is where he works, the United States Congress. And he's not an intern or an office aide, he's Congressman Don Beyer, the Democrat representing Virginia's 8th Congressional District, who was just re-elected to Congress for a fifth term. He has been studying things like multivariable calculus at George Mason University in Northern Virginia, working towards a master's degree in machine learning. His goal? To one day apply his knowledge of artificial intelligence to his work in Congress, especially as technology continues to evolve at a rapid rate. Ayer, who is a member of the House Science, Space and Technology Committee, needs four more undergraduate math and computer science courses before starting his graduate degree in 2024. Joining us now, Congressman Don Bayer, who's also a member of the newly formed Congressional Artificial Intelligence Caucus. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Tell me what got you into AI to begin with. Alicia, I've always been sort of a science nerd my whole life. When I joined the Congress eight years ago and asked to go on the science committee, they laughed and said I was the first person ever to ask to be on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a, a wonderful experience. You know, we're, we're dealing with um, all the fascinating things that are going on in space and in medicine. Um, but I've been particularly impressed by the possibilities of machine learning, artificial intelligence, to see patterns in the immense amount of data that we create, but that we are not, we can't see just with our human eyes. And you know, all of science is, is cause and effect and, and discerning those patterns. And uh, what, I tried to take a, an online course on AI through Coursera, but the math quickly overwhelmed me. I just didn't have enough math background. So when I, when I found out that they'd take a 72 year old in the math class there, I thought, well, let's try it. And it's been really fun. I love that it was the math that tripped you up. And I also love this uh, description from one of your colleagues about what people think AI is. Quote, some people who aren't familiar with AI think that the biggest drawback of AI is evil robots with red laser eyes. There are actually <laughs> drawbacks that are even more substantial than that but more subtle. Help us understand that. What do we need to know about AI technology moving forward? Well, it is, it is there's a, a, a yin and a yang. There's p enormous potential for good. Um, that article mentioned, can we use artificial intelligence to discern a, a little more predictive capabilities from people who may take their own lives and die by suicide? We have 47,000 a year. And uh, I'm convinced that the deeper we go, the more we may be able to prevent a thousand or five thousand of them by by seeing the patterns that evolve. On the downside, of course, we know that it's uh, as my father used to say, garbage in and garbage out. I mean, if you only have a certain set of data going in, you're only going to get a certain kind of conclusions out. The most famous thing is if if you're looking for CEOs, you're going to get a lot of old white men, and that may be what AI predicts. So we want to make sure that the inputs into artificial intelligence. Um, are, are, are valid across our, our whole population. You know, yeah. the, the issues of you know, not uh, of, of equity and of, uh, it's really important. E equal AI is, is what they call it. Yeah, no, the equity question is absolutely huge when it comes uh, to AI. You know, part of the reason I love your story, Congressman, aside from the sort of like congressman goes back to, to Congress piece of it is it does feel like we're living in a moment where the anti-science movement is so strong that to have someone inside the House of Representatives who's saying science is so critical that I want to spend more time studying it seems like a true a true value statement. Yeah, and, and Alicia, when you put that side by side with what you struggle with every day, the fact that we seem to be in America with two different narratives, two different senses of our own history, our own facts, science should be a, a place where we all agree, where, where there are, you know, it's always evolving, but there are really hard facts of what we know now. Congressman Don Byer, I've got to say, is this the end of the educational road? Are you going to get a master's? Anything else? Well, I, I'm... I, I, you know, what I tell my kids is I hope to have my PhD by the time I'm 80, then I'm going to go get a really good job. <laughs> Congressman Dunmire, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight.